uh, one major uh, item that teachers nowadays struggle with but um, need to know inside and out is how to use data to inform their instruction. It's not easily taught because you have to actually be involved in working with it, um, learn about the various assessment tools, um, what they're used for, when do you use them, why do you use them, what do all these numbers mean. When we get the test scores and we yes. interpret them, we don't have to do a paragraph like just about them. We can just put that right into our assessment history. I would Yes, I would put it in the assessment history. There's a lot of information there that cannot be taught in isolation. It has to be taught while practicing. For the kids who do have kneecaps and MAPS, you look at the two of them, the kneecaps and the MAPS testing suggests the following. I think the more exposure to data and to the assessments that they get, the more that they'll be able to utilize it in the classroom. There's, there's teachers who just don't know what to do with data, and that's natural because we haven't always had to use it. But now so much of teaching relies on this testing and this data and what to do with it. It's one of the most powerful things that they can take with them. And the fact that we're exposing to them all this data and how we use it early, they're getting a, a real advantage with it. But if our student doesn't have an IEP, what are we looking up for them? What you might be looking up is for struggling readers, struggling writers, struggling mathematicians. That's right. So you're using the word struggling. Okay. So having the label should not matter. What it means is you're looking at a kid who's having difficulty with reading or writing or math. We've done some other discussions about MAPS testing and kneecap testing. Did that help you? face the beast or tame the beast or understand a little bit more about assessment and how teachers use assessment? Um, the math <laughs> testing has helped um, because then you can, Miss Fairfield gets to use it and see like where her kids are and um, it's been easier because if you see that stuff then you know what stuff you need to teach, what you need to focus on, maybe there's certain questions that the entire class got wrong so it's, it's so she can see it and gear her teaching towards where her students need help so I think that's been a positive to them. And when we met with uh, Maureen Watson to talk about the scores, we had already like looked at our class scores with Miss Fairfield, so it was kind of good to have that little like refresher because there's a lot of information on that sheet. So we were able to see for each um, section of the test what kids needed what, so it was nice to see. What needs to be included, what's really important to be included is to say in K4, if you're a K, if you're a first through fourth grade teacher, you're going to print all of these. You're basically printing these for your advisees. So the other um, area that I was able to speak to the apprentice teachers about is looking at some of the reading and math data that we've collected. And I just wanted them to get an overview of how to um, sort of decipher and and WEA map report, how to look at the standard deviation, how they might group students based on need. But I also um, wanted to really impress upon them that data isn't always a, you know, a formal test, that they're constantly collecting data in the classroom. There's so many ways to break it down, and data helps you do that. It, it helps you drill down or pinpoint the strengths and weaknesses of the individual child for everyone. And that helps us individualize the teaching at home and at school and helps enrich every child as much as we can. This year my view has really, really changed because I always felt like teachers would teach to the test if there were too many tests. And I think that can happen sometimes, but I also feel like if you have a good knowledge of the tests and how they work and how they can help your students, you can use them as a tool. Plus 30, 130. 130 meters. Okay. Meters? Yeah, 130 meters. Okay. 130 meters. So the triple B bound scale, you label the units joy. Mass. It is measuring the mass, and when you specify how much mass there is, what unit in the metric system measures mass. Go ahead, go, go for a second one. Yeah. I'm not